So I'm sure a couple of you out there might be having a couple problems with your, you know, Quest controllers. Maybe you've been getting sticky triggers like I have. Um, maybe the vib vibration is off or something. Um, and if you don't want to just uh, send it out and replace it, uh, like me, uh, there aren't a lot of video resources online right now for taking these uh, controllers apart. So I I've done a bit of digging. Um, and I have found a way to partially disassemble it. Uh, I'm still not totally sure about how to remove the ribbon strips inside of here, so I'm not able to completely take it apart. But it will give you access to, say, the triggers. Uh, in case they're sticky, you can clean them up or see if there's anything lodged in there. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of taking this thing apart, the very first thing you'll want to do is obviously remove the battery cover, but also there's a sticker beneath the battery cover uh, where the battery lies, you're gonna wanna peel that off. Um, here's that sticker that I peeled off. Um, beneath it, there's going to be three additional hidden screws, uh, obviously alongside this fourth screw right here, and you're gonna need to remove all four of those. Um, they are all the same size screw. You don't have to worry about keeping track of uh, which screw goes where. Um, so you can just put those aside as I did. And the next thing you want to do is you want to take off this top cover right here, this black cover. Um, it's held in place around the edges with some adhesive. And lucky for us, there's no uh, ribbon, you know, no ribbon cables like on the touch controllers in the way. So you can, all, all you really have to do like is, uh, for example, I just blew a hairdryer on it and took a a little plastic, whatever they would call that. I'm not sure the actual terminology for it, um, but uh, you know, plastic, not metal. You don't want to scratch anything. Uh, just a little plastic uh, spatula and just, you know, drag it around the edges of the uh, cover here and uh, you'll be able to remove all of that uh, tape slowly but surely. Uh, it did take me a little while, uh, very patiently and carefully removing that glue, but uh, the cover did come off. So, you know, after you do that, all you have to do uh, is remove, there are nine extra screws. Uh, I'll probably show you a picture here soon, but there are nine extra sc uh, screws beneath that cover. And you're going to need to remove all of those and you're going to want to keep track of, of where all those screws go. Um, it looks like there are at maximum four different types of screws. The two screws that hold the ring in place, uh, a couple of other screws, and then two somewhat longer screws. So me, I just drew, drew a couple circles on a post-it note and uh, put some tape on there, double-sided tape to keep everything in place. So I know exactly where everything needs to go. I also took a photo of it so that I knew where the screws would go. Yeah, so after that, uh, what you want to do is you want to remove this um, this exterior ring plastic. Now to do that, you want to start from the right side. It's I find that easier for me. So if you just uh, take this and just pull it off, it should come off with ease. There was also some extra adhesive holding this down, but that's not very hard. You don't have to drag a spatula or anything through. You can, but it should come off on its own. Then you just want to pull this all off so that you can remove this left side, which is held in place a little bit differently than the right side. It has to do with you sort of lifting it up and pulling it back. So once you've removed this uh, right ring here, you simply take off the majority of it here. And what you have to do here is essentially push this ring this way so that you can remove this, this uh, the way that it's held in place is, is forcing you, you you're going to you see that little piece of plastic right there on the bottom uh it's at an angle which means you have to push it in this direction as you're trying to remove it um, but make sure you take that latch off at the top here so let me just show you that again remove this latch right here you just, you just push up on it and it'll just snap out very easy as you can see all that's left for you to do is to simply push this the, r the rest of the ring in this direction and as you can see, everything slides right off, pops right off. Uh, very easy, very simple. So what you're able to do next here is remove this side right here, uh, this panel, I guess. And to do that, you're going to need to flex this side, these, these plastics back a little because of the way that it's held in place. Um, 
as you can see it flexes when I move it back just lift this up a little bit to give some space and then you can just push down this side as you're lifting up this side you see I'm using my index finger here to lift up this and then I'm pushing down on this uh, because the way it's held in place is a ring in between those two pieces of plastic right there if it focuses see the two pieces of plastic make contact that's where the screw goes through this ring is what wraps around that and uh, holds this panel in place and the rest of it should just pop off very simply um, from there you're able to remove this um, it is though keep in mind connected with a ribbon cable as you can see i already messed up uh, i actually chipped off a piece of plastic here trying to remove this so i wouldn't recommend that but what you have to do to remove this uh, ring here is l push this whole assembly slightly nudge it in this direction uh, and as you nudge it, pull away from this uh, area that the uh, ring is slotted in. And it should, with a bit of shimmying, slide right out here. Do it very carefully, very, very carefully, because as you can see here, the uh, chip or board or whatever is connected via a ribbon cable to this. Um, so you're not going to want to pull or yank on it hard at all. Otherwise, you could risk uh, ripping out that cable and obviously messing up your controller and you wouldn't want to do that. Um, again, do this at your own risk. Uh, it's very easy to break your controller doing this, but if you just simply want to, say, clean up the interior like I am here with this rubber that seems to have slided out of position, um, this is generally pretty safe. Anyway, so once you've done this, you have a bit of freedom. Again, you don't yank too hard. As you can see, that ribbon cable there is not going to enjoy that very much if you do, but it does give you enough freedom to take a look at the assembly here. And in my case, uh, my rubber, seems to have slipped, uh, slid a bit away from its default position and just caused some stickiness. Uh, I did try cleaning it to see if it was just debris, but it was not. So to fix this, I'm probably going to have to do some, uh, mess around with this a little bit. Um, not totally sure how I'm going to fix this yet, to be honest. But uh, that is the partial disassembly of this in case you guys need to clean out any debris. Anyway, here you can see the whole assembly. We have the uh, IR light emitters, I assume, that uh, allow the positions of the controllers to be tracked. Uh, the motor ensemble here for the vibrating motor, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a partial disassembly. Uh, for a full disassembly, uh, there are some photo resources uh, online for the original Oculus Quest disassembly, but I'm not as of right now, ballsy enough to take this thing apart. Maybe if this thing breaks one day, I can uh, take it apart completely. But uh, again, simply a partial disassembly for accessing the triggers, uh, the vibrating motor, any buttons, you know, to clean out some debris if you have any small problems with your controller. Um, so to put this thing back together, you would uh, simply reverse all the steps. Um, to put this, you'd have to try to slide this back into its slot. I usually lean it back a little, lean it back so that the trigger goes back into where it fits. Um, instead of pushing it forward, I'm now leaning it back and I'm sort of just using my thumb here to find that sweet spot and it'll slide right back in. Again, with a bit of shimmying left and right, it does help. And as you can see, it has just slotted right back into its spot. Um, this right here, you sometimes need to push it in so it clicks in so everything is level and flush and then you simply want to slide this loop back into its little spot first by uh, first you want to make sure you line everything up so it'll just snap into place as you can see right here and then you just again pull back this little assembly here slide the loop in between those two pieces of plastic and just push it in and it'll very flush uh you know just snap right in pretty much when you are reapplying the uh, ring, you basically want to do the exact same process for how you took it off, but backwards. Um, you want to take the left side with this little uh, piece of plastic, I guess, pa plastic hook here, um, and you want to slide that into its uh, respectable place. Uh, and once you, once that sort of just slides in, and it's hooked and ready, there you go. You can. Uh, then set in place the opposite side, which should be much easier. And it'll click right into place, and you'll have your ring back on. 
And all that's left for you to do is to just screw in all the screws. Hopefully you had memorized, taken a photo of where all the screws are supposed to go. Um, and just put it back together. Very simple. Um, cover just slides back on. You push it on. Uh, if you do have some adhesive remaining, that might help. But applying some adhesive would be helpful. Not necessary, though. Um, yeah. That's a, a partial disassembly of the Quest 2. Any comments would be appreciated in case you guys feel that I did something wrong in taking this apart or might be causing more damage than, than good to it. Um, personally, for me, uh, this was a very simple fix for me. I just had to readjust the rubber here. But, uh, you know, feedback is always appreciated. So, you know, I hope this helped you out.